Welcome to a journey through time, exploring the hidden tales behind a simple yet ubiquitous object in history, the lighter. From its accidental discovery to evolving into an art form, join us as we uncover the fascinating stories behind the tiny flame that has lit up history. Stay tuned as we delve into the intriguing history of the lighter, shedding light on its remarkable evolution. Before the invention of matches, people used splinters tipped with combustible substances like sulfur to transfer fire from one source to another. Growing interest in chemistry led to experiments to create fire directly on these splinters. In 1805, Jean Chancel in Paris discovered that splinters tipped with potassium chlorate, sugar, and gum could be ignited by dipping them in sulfuric acid. Later, this method was refined, culminating in the Promethean match patented in 1828 by Samuel Jones of London. This match consisted of a glass bead containing acid, coated on the outside with igniting composition. When the glass was broken, the paper it was wrapped in would catch fire. Early matches were difficult to ignite and often produced sparks. They also had an unpleasant smell, and the warning on Jones's box, persons whose lungs are delicate should by no means use the lucifers, seems justified. Economic conditions between 1825 and 1835 made match manufacturing an attractive industrial proposition. The first suppliers used non-phosphoric formulas, mostly based on potassium chloride mixtures. The first friction matches were invented by John Walker, an English chemist, in 1827. Walker's friction lights had tips coated with a potassium chloride antimony sulfide paste, which ignited when scraped against sandpaper. Walker never patented his invention. Non-phosphoric friction matches were also being made by others by 1832. In 1831, Charles Soria of France added white phosphorus to his match formula, an innovation that was quickly adopted. In 1835, Janos Irinyi of Hungary replaced potassium chloride with lead oxide, creating matches that ignited more quietly and smoothly. The discovery of red phosphorus in 1845 by Austrian chemist Anton von Schroeder led to the development of safety matches, which separated the combustible ingredients between the match head and the striking surface. J. E. Lundström of Sweden patented this method in 1855. Despite the widespread acceptance of safety matches, white phosphorus matches remain popular due to their better storage qualities and resistance to climatic conditions. However, in the late 19th century, serious toxic effects of white phosphorus, Fossey jaw, were discovered in match factory workers. In 1888, the female workers went on strike to protest the poor working conditions. The strike was successful, and the company, Bryan and May Factory in London, agreed to improve safety standards. However, it took until 1910 for Lucifer matches to be outlawed completely. The Salvation Army, a Christian organization, played a key role in improving the lives of match factory workers. They opened their own match factory that used safe chemicals and paid workers fair wages. Although the Salvation Army's matches were more expensive than those of other companies, they were still popular with many people who supported the organization's mission. The Salvation Army's match factory eventually closed in 1901, but their work helped to make matches safer for everyone. Phosphorus sesquisulfide, much less toxic, was first prepared by French chemist Georges Lemoyne in 1864 but was not used in matches until E.D. Cahen and H. Sabine of the French government match monopoly filed a patent in 1898. Within a few years, white phosphorus was outlawed almost everywhere. Modern safety matches typically have antimony sulfide, oxidizing agents like potassium chlorate, and sulfur or charcoal in the heads, and red phosphorus in the striking surface. Non-safety matches usually have phosphorus sesquisulfide in the heads. As we extinguish the flame on this exploration of the match's history, we've uncovered a narrative that spans centuries, from chance discovery to becoming a canvas for artistic expression. The journey of the match reflects not just advancements in technology but also the diverse stories and moments it has been witness to. From its humble beginnings to the modern innovations, the match's tale is one of resilience and adaptation. Thank you for joining us on this illuminating journey through time. Don't forget to subscribe for more intriguing explorations into the history of everyday objects. Until next time, stay curious.